Hi there Libras, welcome to your beginning of April plea from April 1st. So the two messages that I got for you when I was meditating, the first thing is uh, I see the scene at an office. I see this woman in the fore foreground. Um, she's wearing like a, a white blouse so and, and like dark pants, okay? So it seems to me like you're in a work environment or you're at the office. She's animatedly talking to a male co-worker and she's just like very um, passionate about the story that she's telling the male co-worker. They're both smiling and laughing and in the background there's a door that opens up and there's this man holding a cup of coffee. He wants to be included in the conversation but I feel more so he wants to approach the woman but he doesn't know how to approach her because she's talking to a male co-worker, he, he feels like it might be intrusive of him to um, come in and, you know, try to join the party, right? Or he, he's, like, hesitant about, you know, telling her how he feels. So I feel like it's interesting because it seems like the King of Cups in the, the traditional deck, it's a man holding a cup, right? But in modern day, that image is transposed in a way where it's just another man holding a coffee cup so I thought that was interesting so anyways he's kind of like lurking in the background trying to find a way to talk um, hiding behind the door or peeking out from behind the door trying to you know um, get involved in her life but he's very shy he's probably dealing with self-esteem issues not severely I don't see that he just doesn't want to he, he just doesn't want to interfere in case that male co-worker is somebody that she's interested in or just in case the male co-worker likes her so he doesn't want to you know cause any problems so for you guys it would be really interesting if uh, the king of cups or the knight of cups shows up in this deck but we'll see um, I feel like for you guys you could be the woman that's getting the attention or you could be the man in the background because when I think of Libras I always think of somebody who's like um, completely inoffensive okay it's somebody who's like uh, really sociable very nice very polite very um, just like politically correct okay you don't want to interfere you don't want to say anything harsh to anybody you're just incredibly inoffensive um, inconspicuous as well you kind of blend into your background environment and I, I, I always feel like so once again it could be you that's in the background lurk, lurking wanting to approach somebody or it could be you the one getting a lot of attention the man in the background he's wearing a pink shirt he has darker hair he's wearing a pink shirt so I always think like um, Libra people especially Libra um, Libra moon people, they wear a lot of pink, okay? Male and female, they wear a lot of pink. They wear a lot of purple. And so I feel like it could be, for many of you, if you you are a Libra male, you might be the, the man that's in the background. There's somebody who's very, very passionate, um, who's very, like, center stage, who's uh, very sociable that you might be eyeing, and you're not really sure how to approach this person. And then for others of you, if you're that woman in the foreground, you might have, you know, like another person that might be, have Libran traits, very diplomatic, really sociable as well, but they're unsure about how to approach you, okay? Um, so that's what I'm feeling here. Yeah, there's definitely new passion that you've got coming into the picture. I feel for some of you, you might have emerged from like a separation, a breakup, or a divorce. You're getting yourself back into the dating field. And you know, the, the initially, uh, when we've been like single for a long time, or if we've been in a relationship for a long time, we might not know how to flirt. We might not know how to, um, we might not even know if a person is, that we're interested in likes us or if they're flirting with us. So I do see this energy here, heavy energy about flirtation, but trying to do it the right way and not really knowing when somebody likes us or if somebody is just being friendly. So I do see a lot of that. Um, there is another scene that I, I saw um, after that. Um, this woman in a garden, okay? So, like, it's a really, really nice um, 
warm day. She's uh, mixed, like she's prepared a, a pitcher of lemonade. She's uh, plucked flowers from her garden, like daisies and, you know, just really nice flowers. I, I see some peonies. Um, and she put in, put all the flowers in a vase, fills up the vase, puts it in the center of the table. It's a round table. She's outdoors in her garden. It's like patio furniture. Um, and she's prepared a pitcher of lemonade. And as she goes to sit down, she's like, oh, I need two cups. So she gets two glasses and they're empty. And so I feel like you're expecting visitors. You're expecting, you're beautifying your environment because you're expecting somebody to come visit. Or you are anticipating a visit with another person and you're creating kind of like the perfect environment that you feel would be very visually pleasing to the other person. But either way, I also feel like this energy about, you know, having company over, socializing, um, restarting or resetting your social life. So that could be socializing slash dating, um, inviting people into your home, trying to deepen a relationship, trying to get to know somebody a little bit more, trying to keep in mind the first scene was... Um, you know, somebody who's like uh, in a more work environment, she's surrounded by other people. So the man in the background, he's not really sure how to approach her. So I feel like in the second scene, it's more like trying to create that environment to single out the object of your affection so that you have more alone time with them, making the time, creating a really visually just um, abundant type of an environment so that you can invite somebody in, so that you can put them at ease, so that you can, you know, talk to them and have alone time with them because there are only two cups on that table. So I definitely feel like you're in a position where you are... Um, either flirting with somebody or inviting them into your home or expecting guests okay that's what i'm feeling here last card okay so let's see what we have here the card that really struck out or well, really stood out to me or really struck me was um when it first came out here i have the high priestess and the hermit the high priestess is about this sense of inner knowing, okay? This sense of like our intuition is working overtime, telling us about a situation to tell us like somebody is the right one or to warn us about a situation. It can go both ways. And I have the hermit, and the hermit is a card about spirituality. It's about your spirit guides working behind the scenes to show you something, okay? To kind of guide you in a specific direction. And with them both looking at each other, looking at each other, I almost feel like you're being shown a situation and you know which way that you're supposed to go. I feel like for many of you, there is a situation here in your life that is creating this, Nine of Swords, okay? The Nine of Swords deals heavily with mental energy that keeps like replaying in our mind, in our head, and we're not really sure how to break out of this feedback loop, okay? So we're feeling like, if I do this, the other thing's going to happen. And I also feel for many of you, there might be some situation here on top of the Hierophant, and the Hierophant deals with institution. It deals with... Um, expectations and it deals more with like especially family expectation family wants us to do one thing when our heart and our mind wants us to do another and I also feel like this is the month where you kind of have to drown out other people's energies other people's expectations drown out the noise and just really focus on what you need to do for many of you I feel like you might be on the older uh, age spectrum um, you might have gotten out of, you know, like, like I said, I feel like I'm getting an energy of a group of people that have been single for a really long time, and you're getting out dating, you're getting out into the dating world, and you're almost like trying to find that more practical relationship, the, the more practical relationship partner, uh, you're looking for companionship, you're looking for somebody that, you know, you might not, like, want to get married, might not want to, you know, go whole, through the whole spiel again with the 
family planning, um, you know, joining up your finances, joining up your assets. You might have recently gotten divorced. You might have been separated. And uh, you're getting into the world trying to date again. And what you're really after is a lot of compatibility. You're not trying to go wild. You're not trying to, like, uh, find somebody who wants to, you know, hit the club every weekend. You're not trying to find somebody who, who who's still trying to find their way in the world. You want somebody who's already where you're at, who's like meeting you where you're at. Somebody who, you know, have hobbies. They have a lot of things that you both can talk about. They have common interests. You're finding, you're trying to find that relationship that is a lot more compatible. So in the back of your mind, it's almost like I'm looking for companionship. I'm looking for compatibility. But there is another on the flip side of that, which is the ace of rods. This is passion, chemistry. This is like a budding new romance that many of you have um, found yourself in. Okay. And so on the one hand, we're looking for a safe choice. And there might be a safe choice that's coming in. Somebody that you know is already on your same page. They've been there. They've done that. And, you know, you feel like this could be, you know, like the, the perfect life partner moving forward. You might need, not need to, you know, get into the whole marriage, children, uh, settling down, joining up your bank account. This could be somebody who's sufficient on their own. You're sufficient on your own. You both need a lot of quiet time and you both need a lot of space. And you feel this is a safe choice. But there's another choice that's really beckoning you. And it denotes to me great passion, great chemistry coming through between you and another person that you might have been trying to downplay or you might have felt like it was a missed opportunity. It's linked up here with the Five of Cups, which indicates to me that for many of you, you feel like this person might not be a safe enough choice for you. They're very passionate. They're very, um, they're, they're, they're very social. And so you might not feel like they've gotten the partying, the, the, the you know, um, the wild phase or the wild streak out of their system just yet. You might feel like they still have a lot of grown up to do. There might be an age difference. And so you're feeling like you have to forego this relationship because they haven't really figured things out yet. But you're really passionate about this person. This person stirs you in a way that no, no one else has stirred you in the past. And because of that, I feel like you're feeling slightly off kilter or you're feeling like this might not be the safe bet or this might not be a safe choice. So I feel like, you know, once again, there's this trepidation about um, asking somebody out on a date or wanting to get involved with another person or wanting to talk to a person but feeling like they have a lot of suitors or feeling like... Um, the environment is disallowing a closer connection, is disallowing one-on-one -on -one interaction. Um, I'm seeing a lot of interference getting in the way, okay? But I'm also feeling for many of you, there's definitely choosing between two options, okay? We have here the two of pentacles, weighing out the pros and cons, weighing out a situation, weighing out to see what your heart really wants. And I feel like for many of you, there's a connection here with a person that is a little bit on or off, that is not as stable as you'd like, that is, it's, it's really, really passionate, but I feel like in a way, it, it scares you. It's bringing something so new into your life that you're trepidatious as to how to move forward. For some of you, this could be an earth sign, a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. I feel a connection here between possibly a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Somebody's very sentimental. The other one is very practical. Somebody who's really like, you know, um, easy to talk to. The other person is somebody who gets things done. So I feel like you're straddling the fence or, or torn between and trying to choose between two people. Um, I did the Gemini reading, by the way, and it did mention straddling the fence, being indecisive and uh, not going for something. And I feel like this might be an energy that's playing out for air signs because it's also in your reading, choosing between two options. And I feel like you might be looking at the more practical 
aspect of a relationship like you're you're realizing that compatibility innate uh, compatibility goes a lot further and I feel like you're opting for the more safer the, the past the the path of least resistance okay and you could potentially forego something that is really exciting that is really going to break you out of your shell but I feel like you know you're taking you're definitely taking the safer route and I'm sensing as well the safer route might not yield what you're looking for so I feel like whatever decision that you're making right now you want to think about it a little bit longer and you want to really be honest with yourself you know why I'm not why am I denying this passionate side that this person is stirring up within me why am I foregoing that? Why does that scare me? Because I feel like the reason why you're you're looking at this person as if, you know, are they going to stay around? I feel like there's an element here about age difference between you and a significant other or you and somebody that you're interested in. And you you might be judging them based on their age rather than based on their life experience. So I feel like it's time to dig a little bit deeper and, and look at things beneath the surface rather than just looking at things at face value. You have to do a little bit more sleuthing. You have to do a little bit more observing. And you have to do a little bit more like um, you have to understand as, as well where somebody is coming from getting to the root of a, of a situation okay the hierophant deals with tradition it's like long-standing tradition it's somebody it, it's it's a situation that is like um, all the parts make up the whole and so you kind of have to look at somebody's upbringing in order to understand why they are the way that they are I feel like somebody that you're looking at might come across as a rebel when deep down they are as conservative or as orthodox as you can get but I feel like there is a veneer here that shows you something that you feel is not safe but unearthing that looking at things deep underneath is going to allow you to see this person in a more realistic or in a true light okay so things coming to light there's heavy energy here about coming into a recognition or into an understanding of something that you hadn't before with the high priestess and the hermit card this is like the meeting of the mind this is uh, indicative to me of two people who are a really good match because they are old souls and it could be all souls reuniting in this lifetime or people that have gone through many 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 incarnations they've had many many past lives and so even though they're reborn in this lifetime as a baby they still have that knowledge from all their past existence to be able to look at life in a very old lens okay so you are dealing with someone who is very very independent both of these cards indicate people who are very self-possessed they don't need validation from their external environment they know what they want to do they move forward they're not craving relationships like they're there they don't need to have another person by their side so they're okay with being on their own they're self-sufficient financially and emotionally they're not needy they're not clingy they're both independent and they're very much like go with the flow if it's meant for me it will come into the picture for me if it's not meant for me no matter how much or how tightly I I cling on to it it's going to slip my fingers so I feel like it's going to slip through my fingers excuse me so I feel like you're dealing with somebody who is definitely in alignment with you but on the surface and this is really important why we need to dig a little bit deeper this month and not take things at face value on the surface they might seem childlike younger more attention um, grabbing more needy in your eyes but I feel like deep down they are indeed a very very old soul they've dealt with their fair share of disappointments in life and so they take life take come what may and so they have a you know devil may care they even have like a, a very like um, transient attitude as to the way they do things they might approach a situation almost like I'm seeing this woman holding the flower and it's almost like nothing lasts forever so let's just seize the day 
okay it's almost like a wilting flower nothing lasts forever let's seize the day and I'm not going to stubbornly cling on to a situation if the other person doesn't want to be with me so you're dealing with someone who is a very very old soul they have a lot of self-awareness at face value it might seem like they don't but I feel like deep down there's this magnetic pool constantly um, converging like it, it's almost like everything conspiring to bring the two of you together and for whatever reason Libras I feel like you've been fighting it okay um, I'm also seeing as well a, a family situation could be divorce could be marriage could be family expectations all of those things it's like a whole ball of yarn it's complicated it's it's complex it's all wrapped up together. I'm seeing situations where there might be like estate planning. So somebody might have passed on and there's like a lot of uh, things coming up in wills. Okay. The high priestess, usually, you know, she holds a scroll. And I always think of that as like assets, uh, estate planning, wills and testaments and, and things that needs to be sorted out. Uh, after a demise of a situation, it could also indicate like legality, um, legal issues, as well as like uh, trying to divvy up assets, okay, especially property, like housing. Um, so I, I, I feel like all of those things getting involved in the picture. And then I also feel for those of you who have children, grandchildren, children, you're trying to leave um, a lasting legacy. You're trying to figure out and you're trying to decide. If I leave the home to the, the, the child, you know, or the grandkids or to whoever it is, I have this really beautiful home. If I leave it to this child, will he or she take care of it? Or will they just sell it, take the money and, you know, leave and squander the money? So I feel like you're seriously looking at somebody's character to decide what to bequeath them. That's what it seems like. Because you don't want them to make the wrong choice and because you have sentimental ties to the things that you're giving away and you hope that they would make the best uh, best decision or the best, um, th they would do right by you but you're not really sure so you're still at the stage where you're kind of like trepidatious, okay? Um, I'm also feeling as well for many of you uh, on the other other end of the spectrum I feel like there's a lot of um, information coming through, like in a, um, it's like spiritual messages coming into the picture. We have, let's see, four, five major arcana cards that are in the picture, the hermit, the high priestess, all indicative of, you know, spirituality. We have the temperance card telling you to be patient. We have the Wheel of Fortune, which means the wheel of fate is turning so that a situation can come together. And I feel for many of you, there might be a new job in the making. If you have been, you know, financially uh, in, in the red or if you have been like piecing together odd jobs in order to make ends meet, there is a big job coming into the picture. We have the Page of Pentacles. This is the apprentice. This is still something fairly new that you have to learn, that you have to be trained for, that you have to, you know, kind of like build up towards. But it's the beginning of something that you can build upon. Whereas if you're in this situation where you're piecing together odd jobs here and there to make ends meet, this is not a good place for you to be. So they're kind of telling you you have something brand new that is really going to change your life. And it's something that like um, will be more in alignment with your passion, your skills, and your capabilities. But it might not start out with everything that you're hoping for. So I feel like you definitely should try to take this and run with it because it has a lot more growth potential and there's a lot more that can be at the end of the day it's like this is the thing that can grow okay so even though it starts out like uh, in a position where it's you're looking at it you're like I'm making more here with both of these jobs but these jobs might be part-time jobs there's no pen roll in okay so we constantly see this turning of the tides so I feel like especially for people who have been single the hermit okay single not finding the right people and you're at a point where you're just like maybe I should just settle don't settle go for the new and allow the new opportunities to come in even though it is a little bit scary just sort of like you know that man wearing that pink shirt holding a cup of coffee go up to the object of your affection 
and just, you know, um, push your way through. Be more assertive, okay? So I feel like you're going to be able to get the attention from the people that you want. I, I feel like all the fears might be just in your head with this line of swords. It's not in reality. I, I definitely feel like there's somebody, there, it's like mutual reception. There's definitely somebody that's really interested in you too. So go for it, okay, Libras? The last thing that I want to end up with here uh, and talk about is um, I have this temperance card. I think this might be the last month that I do um, readings with these cards because the cards themselves, I feel like they're very hard to read. This is the Aquarian deck, and I'm an Aquarius, so I thought it would resonate more with me, but I, I just feel like I've never used this deck because it's just really hard to read. The, the lines are very angular, and I like more organic drawings, but enough about that. So what I'm getting from this, with this card, and it's, it's really the way that the Temperance card is um, depicted, it's just an angel in this deck, okay? It's just somebody with a lot of inner wisdom and a lot of knowledge. And um, I'm almost seeing like, almost like a queen bee, okay? Like a beehive. It's somebody that nurtures, cares for people. Um, possibly, you might be dealing with someone who is a very, very, very strong matriarch, okay? And um, this is somebody that has a lot of wisdom, so it falls right above the high priestess. And the high priestess is like um, somebody who, it, it's also a, a very strong matriarch, but her energy is a lot softer. And so the temperance cards, like this massive matriarchal beehive type of energy, queen bee type of energy. Um, I feel like there's somebody in your life that might be overpowering because of their energy. Um, they're very financially very um, stable. They're very self-made. They uh, have also been through a lot and I feel like they're giving you advice in a way that that um, so just bear with me. They're giving you advice in favor of continuity. They're not giving you advice in favor of forging a new path, breaking free and you know uh, following your heart. So you kind of need to understand what advice you're getting from people and what their agendas are. Does that make sense, Libra? See both sides of the coin, okay? But especially, you have to understand where the other person's coming from and whether or not they're giving you advice that might be self-serving. So I, I, I'm seeing somebody who is a stickler for tradition. They're trying to uphold they're trying to maintain that beehive. They might be trying to hang on very, very tightly to their power. Okay, so if you're coming to this person for advice, you have to understand that's where they're coming from. That's their world view, and that's their vantage. We look at the underlying motives a little bit more. We can't be the, the, the social butterfly anymore. We kind of need to like stick to one flower and we kind of need to really understand the situation. We really need to really get to know and get to know on a very deep level um, about motives and about, you know, expectations, okay? Is this person giving me things with strings attached? Or are they giving me things so that because they want what's best for me? So I definitely see a lot of giving with strings attached. And I feel like you're dealing with somebody like that. So I just want you to be a little bit careful, okay? Um, on the relationship front, we do have um, Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I have Virgo coming up with a um, Hermit, and then I have Taurus coming up here with the Hierophant. A link in the description box below for a psychic out of California. Her name is Bridget. She is phenomenal. I highly recommend her. So if you're in need of, you know, um, advice, spiritual advice or just um, whatever it is that you need. She's phenomenal. I highly recommend you uh, getting a session with her. So that's in the description box below. I will be back in about two weeks time for your mid-month reading. Take care.